all right welcome back everyone for another video so i know it is really unusual for me to be uploading or even recording on a saturday uh, normally i record on monday tuesday sometimes wednesday and then of course friday um, but to upload and record on a saturday that's kind of really unusual for me but given recent events and given how our world's going and given how much uh, problems the world's having right now, I figured now would be a really good time to have some kind of um, encouragement, some kind of uh, something to help you guys keep going, especially for myself. Um, things have been really hard for my little household here. Uh, we've been having money problems. Um, I've been really struggling trying to find a new job. Um, I mean, I work my regular job already, but it's it's not paying enough. Um, my old man here is gonna have to start finding a new job soon now too, and hopefully one that pays decent money. Um, so yeah, it's like so right now. Right now, things are things are things are tough right now, um, which is kind of really be. I haven't really been uploading twice a week. Like this week, I did Psalms, but I missed uh, another Bible study. I was supposed to upload Monday and Tuesday, and I only uploaded one of those days. Same thing, I think, last week too. Um, it is. I, I know. I've been doing my Bible studies. I've been getting everything. I actually got John 17 done finally, but things have just been so stressful, so hectic, so um, hard to deal with that it's it's really put me into a kind of depression mode. Um, I am really worried about trying to make ends meet. I'm really worried about trying to get this new job that I, that I applied for. Um, I'm really worried about trying to get my, my son onto these, uh, the medical stuff that he needs. Um, it has been, it's been, it's been tough, okay, to say the least. So, yesterday when I started thinking about it, um, I was really worried, really stressing out yesterday. Um, and I don't know why I didn't think about it before or why I even came up with, or what came up with uh, the idea of doing this. Uh, but my first thought about all of this and how to relieve it was to go into my Bible. Now, like I said, I don't know why I didn't think about this to begin with, okay? Because the Bible tells you first thing that you're supposed to go to Him. You're supposed to talk to Him, tell Him everything, lay all your problems at His feet, and He will help you with it. Now, like I said, I have no idea why I didn't think about this sooner because that would probably save me a lot of problems if I had just gone to God first and put all of this at his feet and trusted him and stopped worrying so much because things are happening for a reason. Uh, but for whatever reason, I didn't. And yesterday was when I first started thinking, hey, maybe I need to start doing this instead. So when I thought about that, I started thinking about you guys. I started thinking about my friends. Um, I mean, not really like I have a whole lot of friends. Most of my friends are on, on Discord. But still, I still thought about them. Um, I actually thought about one person in particular. Uh, she's. I'm actually going to tag her, her channel at the end of this video. Because I think personally she can benefit from this with everything that she's going on to. On top of the fact that, that she's now starting to make uh, new uh, her new uh, YouTube videos. So go check her out. Um, I think you'll like her content. She kind of makes similar stuff to me, um, but she has, she's been away from YouTube for a while and now she's trying to make new ones. But like I said, she's been going through a lot. So personally, I think this, this video that I'm making could actually really benefit her. I think it can benefit anyone else. Um, in general, this is meant for everyone, and 
really, really helpful. So I came up with a list of Bible verses that I think will help with stress, worry, anxiety, just to help you guys, give you the encouragement to, hey, stop worrying about this so much and put it at God's feet. So I have, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Wait, 12? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Yes, I have 12. I miscounted. I have 12 Bible verses that I found in the Bible here that I think would really help with everything and anything you're possibly going through right this moment. So I'm going to go into each one, kind of explain a little bit without going too much into it. And if you guys have a different explanation of what you think it means or uh, you want to input something, let me know, comment below on what you guys think, okay? So most of the ones I have are in Psalms. So let's just do Psalms first. Uh, let's do all the Psalms first. So I got Psalms 94. I don't like that Psalms has so many Psalms. All right, so I got Psalms 94 and 19. All right, so it says, when the cares of my heart are many, your, cons uh, your consolations cheer my soul. So basically what it's saying is, if you have a lot of cares in your heart, so like for example, a lot of burdens kind of things, like uh, your consolations will cheer my heart. Uh, now, I don't know if anyone knows what consolations mean, uh, personally, I didn't when I first looked it up. I mean, then again, uh, my vocabulary list is kind of short. So let's see what it says. Uh, what it says, what this means. All right. So it says comfort received by a person after a loss or dis disappointment. So basically, if something is is not going your way, if something is a big disappointment or Alex after a loss uh, this is what it's kind of applying to okay so it's basically saying when the cares of my heart are many so when you have a lot of things going on in your heart a lot of things on your uh, your constellations his encouragement his his the uh, his comfort God's comfort will cheer our hearts because okay? I mean that's kind of the whole point to this in general I um, mean the whole point to being a Christian the whole point to uh, putting our faith and love and trust and everything into God is because He's there for us. Okay. Um, oops. All right. Uh, so next one, I got Psalms 55. See, this is why I don't like. I I, I love Psalms, but I don't love Psalms at the same time because there's just so many. 55:22. All right. So it says, cast your burden on the Lord and he will sustain you. So basically saying, I mean, it's kind of obvious, cast whatever burdens you have onto the Lord and he will sustain you. He will take care of you. He will provide for you. And like I said, I've been neglecting at doing this, which like I, said, I don't really know why I've been doing that. Maybe it's because I'm used to just relying on myself. I've never had to rely on anyone else. I've never been encouraged to rely on anyone else. Um, when I was a Norse pagan, uh, the Norse pagans, you had to rely on yourself. You couldn't trust anyone else. I mean, you can trust your family, but even then family sometimes backstabbed you. Sometimes family did not mean they were blood related. Sometimes family was the ones who hurt you the most. Um, so, I learned real quick growing up not to trust anyone. Um, I mean, as much as I love my mom, I didn't trust her for most of my childhood because uh, not like she really knew what was going on, but she didn't protect me in the way that I need to be. Uh, my childhood is complicated, so I'm not going to go into that. I'm just. Um, uh, but it, in other words, basically saying, cast your burden, whatever is on your plate, whatever is on your heart, whatever is troubling you, cast it onto God, and He will take care of you. Okay, and like I said, that one I really needed to know because, like I said, I've been so used to just having to rely on 
just myself. Uh, so I don't have, I only have two in Psalms. Okay, so the next one I have is actually in Proverbs. I got Proverbs 12, uh, 25. It says, anxiety in a man's heart weighs him down, but a, but a good word makes him glad. So basically saying, I mean, another word, it's kind of obvious as well, uh, anxiety in a man's heart weighs him down. So just like how my anxiety, my, or I don't really have anxiety, I just got the depression. Um, but the stress that's been on me, the pressure that's been on me, the uh, depression has been really making me down okay it's been really weighing me down heavily it's been making me kind of lash out a lot more um it's been making it difficult for me to even get out of bed uh i've been sleeping a lot later i've noticed that too like i sometimes i sleep until one o'clock now um normally i'm up like like noon um but it's been it's been really difficult for me just to do basic things like cleaning the house um even wanting to, okay, as much as I, don't get it wrong, as much as I love my kid, okay, it's been making it even difficult for me even wanting to go pick him up from school. Uh, it's been making me difficult from wanting to just, and I, and I, I know this is another thing, okay, I really like watching uh, my uh, TV stuff. Uh, it's been seriously making me difficult to even just wanting to watch a movie or listen to music or anything it's been really making it difficult for me to do so do anything um but a good a good word makes him glad so the good word literally is the bible okay that is what it's saying this entire thing will make you glad it will actually help relieve what is going on here especially when you compare it to, when you can not, not compare it uh combine it with the psalms one that i just read where he says cast your burdens on god you can buy the two of them together. You're reading the Bible. You're casting your problems, everything onto God so he can take care of it, so he can deal with it. It makes everything so much easier. Okay. Yesterday, I was, I swear, I was having such a difficult day. I was stressed out. I didn't want to do anything. And then I started going into the Bible verse and I started doing this little project of mine here. And I noticed from that point till now, a lot has changed. I am not so stressed out. Um, I know whatever happens, God will take care of me. God will take care of me and my son. And I'm not so stressed out as I was before. Yes, I'm still a little stressed out. I'm still a little worried. I'm still really trying for that job. I still really want things to try and start getting a little better. But I know it's not going to if I keep doing it, trying to handle it myself. Okay, I need God's help to help me with it. I need God to take away all of the anxiety, all of the uh, pressure that I'm feeling myself and just let him handle it. Okay, and that is basically what it's saying here. You're letting it weigh you down. It's not going to make it any easier. All right. Uh, okay, so now I, I'm just going to do all of the Old Testament first before I get into the New Testament. I don't have a whole lot in the New Testament, but I do have like four. So I'm just going to do all the old ones. That just sounds, sorry, that did, that just sounded really wrong. Like I, like I was meaning, like calling an old person old. All right, so the next one I have is Isaiah 35. Now I've never read Isaiah, but it looks like it's kind of more songy poem stuff. All right, so I got Psalms 35, um, Psalms 35, four. All right, it says, say to those who have an ancient heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. With the recompense of God, he will come and save you. So another verse that I really needed to hear uh, with everything that is going on. It is literally telling you to encourage others who have an anxious heart, who is having the exact same thing I'm going through. You're basically encouraging them at the same time as encouraging yourself. Saying, hey, you need to be strong. Don't have fear. Uh, behold your God will come with vengeance with the ruby compense of God he will come and save you so not only is this first directed at me to try and encourage me 
to not be afraid, not to worry, to cast everything onto God again. It is also telling you, like me directly, to tell others that same, that same exact same thing, to try and encourage them, to try and hey, remind them that God is behind them, God is in their corner, God is going to protect them, He's going to do what you need, to do whatever it needs to be done to help you, and that you need to just trust Him. Um, so this one really, really stuck out the most to me. Uh, probably like one of my top two out of all of these verses because this one like really, this one just really kind of gave, gave me the inspiration to even do this video in the first place. Okay. Um, I don't know, like I said, I don't know Isaiah, but this one was spot on. Okay. Um, Philippians, that's the New Testament, right? Yeah, that's the New Testament. Second thoughts and Moses, so that's the New Testament. I think I have more, actually I have more. Wait, is Jeremiah in the Old Testament? I think I need to do like a, what do you call it? Um, I, I need to memorize the Bibles. Like, I don't know where all these are. I don't know if Jeremiah is in the New Testament or Old Testament. I know mo I know these other ones. I know Philippians is in the New Testament. I know Second Thessalonians is in the New Testament. I know Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, but I don't know about Jeremiah. I think that's an Old Testament. I'm mean, pretty sure, right? 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 Jeremiah, eleven thirty-six. That's an Old Testament. Yeah. Yes, it is. It is okay. Don't mind me. I, I the only thing I know is that Je the only thing I know about Jeremiah is Jeremiah is a bullfrog. Some song. <laughs> Anyways, um, Jeremiah twenty nine is what I have. Twenty six, twenty nine, twenty nine, eleven. Um. For I for I know the plans I have for you declares the Lord, plans for welfare, uh, welfare and not for your evil, to give you a future and hope. So that's, I didn't get the chance to read this one yesterday, but that one actually does stick out a lot as well. Because basically here, let me read it again. For I know the plans I have for you. So literally God is saying he, 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 he knows what he's got for you. He knows what's going to happen. Uh, he has plans already set in motion for each individual person. Uh, to declare the word plans for welfare so welfare obviously your well-being uh, your household so he's got plans for your welfare uh, and not and uh, not for evil so obviously God's not evil he's not going to uh, plan for you to be I don't know possessed by the devil uh, that's just the first thing that came to my mind uh, he's not gonna plan for you to be hit by a car Okay, he's not going to do that. Um, to give you a future and a hope. So literally, he's got plans for you. He's got plans for your future. He's got plans for you, giving you hope. He literally has your entire life in his hands. And he is going to benefit it towards good, not towards evil. Okay. Um, now, I think everything else is in the New Testament. So, okay, so let's go ahead and get to the New Testament then. Alright, so that's Jonah. So the first thing I have is Matthew 11. If I can actually get my paper to work. Alright, so Matthew 11, 28. Alright. Come to me, all who are who are labor and are heavy burden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and lean for me. Right, twenty-eight. 30. Okay. Um, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and low and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So literally, basically, God is telling you. That anyone who is labored, anyone who is burdened, um, you guys got the heavy weights on you, uh, come to him and he will give you rest. Then he is talking about how the fact that his yoke, his, 
I guess, burden his entire, let me just do this, okay? I don't exactly uh, know what their meaning for this is, so you. All right, so then word for word meaning is, um, Okay, we're, we're not going to go off that. It's, <laughs> I get what I mean. I, I, I just trying to explain it in a way that you guys actually understand. Um, I literally basically he's telling you that he is going to put his burden, I guess, on you. And it's, it's, it's easy. It's light. Okay. His whole entire thing is what I'm talking about is this, I guess this is what yoke really is. Um, I mean, that, that's why he explained it to me. Um, word for word, I really don't know how to explain it. I just know in my head, I know what it means, but trying to get it out is a whole different thing. Um, but all right, uh, here it says down here it says the wooden frame, uh, joining two animals, usually oxen, for pulling heavy loads. It is a metaphor for one's for for one person's relationship to another, and also a common metaphor for the law. The Pharisees' interpretation of the law, with the extensive list of rules, had become a crushing burden. Jesus' yoke of discipleship, on the other hand, brings rest through simple and wholehearted commitment to Him. There you go. Okay, I was having a hard time explaining it. <laughs> discipleship. Okay, so basically he's saying that his yoke is easy, it is lightweight, it's not burdensome. So he's literally telling you, exchange, do an exchange basically. You put your heavy weight, heavy burden, uh, anything that is troubling you, bothering you on him, and he will give you that. He will give you discipleship, he will give you uh, rest. <laughs> Excuse you. Um, and, and we personally, our souls will find rest within him. Okay. That was a little difficult to explain. I'm sorry. All right. Um, okay. So the next one I have is 625. I am sorry. These are not in order. All right. So I got 625. Okay, so it's basically the 25 through 34. Uh, the whole part where it says, don't be anxious. So let me go ahead and read that to you. It says, therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns and yet you ha your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of they, uh, no, wait, and which of you be anxious can add a single hour to his band of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass, the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what, sh what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need, need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day in it, uh, is its own trouble. So literally what God is basically telling here, um, what Jesus is basically saying is, just don't be anxious, okay? You don't need to be anxious or worried about what you're going to be eating, uh, putting food on the table, I just said that, uh, putting clothing on your guys' back, uh, keeping money or your keep money in your pocket, the roof of your head, any of that. And he's comparing it to the animals, uh, the birds, of, 
the birds they're not they're not worried about uh, shelter they're not worried about food because God already provides for them and then he's comparing it to the lilies of the field and he's saying how we're much greater than they so literally basically God is telling you he's like don't don't be worried don't be stressed out be, don't be anxious because no matter what God is going to take care of you you are provided by him you are his child you are gonna be okay okay so it's literally what he's telling you to do uh, just don't stress okay I lost my I lost my snappers okay all right so now I have uh, Luke 12 and I only have one in Luke just saying Luke 12 I should have had these all marked out. I didn't even think about it. Luke 12, 25. All right. Okay, it says, And which of you, be anxious, can add a single hour to a span of life? If you, um, if then you are not able to do a small thing as that, why are you anxious about the rest? So literally, there. I mean, this is exactly the same thing as we were just reading to. Um, actually, literally, it, it's the exact same thing. Is that do not be anxious. Okay. So I mean, I, mean, I guess here, I guess they're really trying to poke the bear and say, "Hey, stop worrying." Okay. Really. Um. All right, and then I got John, which is what I'm in right now, anyway. So, ha ha! I have a lot of this stuff done. Okay, so I got John 14, which is what I just read, actually. All right, 27, right here. All right, it says, "Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world, I, not as the world gives, do I give to you." Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. So he's literally telling us to don't be afraid. Don't be troubled because he is leaving peace with us. Um, not not as the world gives do I give to you. Okay, and then he's, he's like I said, let your, not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. So he's literally telling us, don't be troubled, don't be afraid. Uh, because he's he's leaving well, at this point in time um, he was already getting ready to go to the cross he's getting ready to leave the world so he's basically saying hey I'm gonna be leaving the world I'm gonna be leaving peace with you guys okay um, and he's in, in other words he's kind of trying to give him give them strength at that point trying to encourage them um, then I've got right done that one, right done that one. I got first Peter. But wait, do I have Philippians in here? I do have Philippians in here. Okay, hold on, hold on. I have the Philippians first. All right, so I have Philippians uh, four six. Okay, whoops. I'm not even on four. I'm on three. Uh, ignore me. All right. So it says, uh, it says, The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And, pe and the peace of God, which... The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and your minds in Christ Jesus. Okay. So basically he's telling you, like, don't be anxious about anything. Don't be so stressed out. Don't worry about this. Cast your burdens onto God, going back to that one verse. Uh, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your quest be made known to God. So if you have anything that you need, anything that would... So if you have anything that would actually help make a life a little better, like my my case, if I really need this job, if I really need uh, more hours, he's saying, 
uh, let your request be made known to God. So literally, go to prayer. Go talk to God. Tell him, hey, God, I really need this job. Um, I really need more hours. I really need this, this, and this. Can you please, please help me with it? Um, and, I mean, God will answer according to his time and will. I um, mean, he's not going to leave you just completely stranded. Okay, but he's literally telling you, go to God, go tell him, hey, this is what I need, and he will he will give you rest. I mean, like I said, this is going back to the other verses in in, in all of us that you come with it. Um, he's telling you that he, he will give you rest. He's telling you to go to God, put your burdens at his feet, tell him what you need, tell him everything that is troubling you. And he will give you rest, he will provide for you, he will take care of you, he will give you what it is you're trying to get. Okay, um, and then going on into the next verse, it says, And the peace of peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Jesus, in Christ Jesus. Um, so literally, he's basically saying the peace of God, the peace which we don't really completely fully understand. We will never probably will ever will understand it. Um, it will end up guarding our hearts and our minds with Christ Jesus. Okay. Uh, all right, going to the next one. I know where I'm going to have all of these written down on the screen too, so just so you know. Uh, so I got Second Thessalonians up here next. Um... 2 Thessalonians 3.16 It says, Now may the Lord uh, bleh, bleh. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times in every way the Lord be with you at, bleh, bleh, be with you all. So he's literally telling you that the Lord of peace that's what he is, is will give you peace in every way at all times and that the Lord will be with you all. He's literally just telling you that, hey, he's the Lord of peace. Okay, that's the first thing, first and foremost. Uh, he's going to be with you at all times, and he's going to give you peace at all of those times. Okay, he's going to be with you no matter what. Okay, so let's go on to the next one. Okay, so I have... If I can actually find it. First Peter. I passed it. Yep. First Peter uh, 5, 6 through 7. It says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Again, the exact same thing as cast your burdens at his feet. He's literally telling you to cast all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Um, but you want to humble yourself before the mighty hand of God at the proper time so that he may exalt you and, ca and cast all your anxieties on him. That's a mouthful. <laughs> but yeah, literally, it's basically the exact same thing as, as the previous one. Cast all your problems at his feet and he will take care of you. Um, don't be troubled. Don't stress out. He's gonna take. He he's not going to abandon you. Literally. Uh, all right. That was the last one, actually. <laughs> all right. So give me a second. All right. So yes, that was actually my last Bible verse. So I have all those Bible verses by the Bible verses. I have all those Bible verses written here in my Bible. Okay, so I have um, plaster on the front of my Bible here. Okay. So on the in case that I ever need to go back to this and be reminded, say, hey, I need a verse for this, this, or this. Oh, I just need a, I just need a verse that'll help me remind me that I don't need to be so stressed out. I have them right there. Okay. Uh, I will include this at the very end of it so in case you guys need to just go back over these again you guys can okay i mean these these verses have already helped me a lot just remember that i i'm not doing this one i'm not walking this world alone okay this 
ver these verses have reminded me that God is with me at all times, that He is actually taking care of me, He is providing for me. Um, it has reminded me that once again, I'm not alone in this. I, ma I made the decision full heartedly to trust in God, to turn away from being a North Pagan, to completely commit to my Bible, and to com commit to God himself, to Jesus, to everything that he's done for us. And by doing that, it also means that we fully commit to the fact that he's now in control of our lives. Okay? He is fully in control of anything and everything that happens, and worrying about it, stressing about it, is not going to it's not going to change anything all it's going to do is eventually make you sick because you're stressing yourself out too much um it's just going to cause more problems in the household because you're worrying about it uh and by worrying and stressing out and all of that kind of makes you um lash out in certain ways that could actually cause a um problem between relationships um which is, I think, one of the reasons why me and my roommate have been kind of uh, butting heads so much the last couple of days, the last couple of weeks now, actually, um, is because we've been really struggling with money. We've been really having an issue with it. Uh, and it's just been one thing after another after another, and we're taking it out on each other because we can't. Because I know that he's not going to go anywhere. He knows I'm not going to. He knows I'm not going to back down. So it's basically two bulls trying to go at each other and trying to fight for dominance and trying to get one to back down. Um, and all it's doing is causing more problems between us. It's causing more problems between me and my old man. It's causing problems between my old man and my roommate. It is just causing more problems for everyone else that's in this household. Uh, on top of it too, it is actually kind of impacting my kid. So, trying to remind myself that, hey, God is in control, God has all of this, cast my problems, my troubles, my burdens at his feet and just let him handle it, because I know he's got it. Um, whatever happens, happens. Uh, I will take one day at a time. I will continue praying and asking him for guidance, for help with trying to get this job, with trying to get a pay increase. Um, something that will help relieve the burdens that are on my shoulder. Because right now I am the head of the household. I mean, my old man, he works, yeah, he works too, but I'm technically the breadwinner, uh, whatever you want to call it, of the household. I make sure the house is clean, I make sure laundry's done, I make sure my kids in school and fed and got clothes, uh, most of the cats I take care of. Uh, my roommate takes out the dog, but even then, sometimes I, 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 I take care of the dog as well. I, I mostly provide for him. Uh, so I've got a lot going on with my plate. I'm trying to get all of this stuff done. I'm trying to make things just go a little smoother. Um, but, like I said, I'm used to having to do it on my own. I'm not used to having to rely on someone. I'm not used to actually asking someone for help. So actually having someone there for me who's actually supposed to help me with it is kind of really weird. It's kind of different. But that's something I have to keep reminding myself. I have to keep reminding myself that I chose this path for a reason and I need to keep reminding myself that God is not going to abandon me. He's not going to uh, let me do this alone. And especially since the fact that since I did choose Him I need to try and let him, I need I need to try and remind myself to let him take control that I need to follow him I need to follow what he has planned and letting him direct and take control and actually show me what I need to do and making things easier making things the way he wants them to be um so yeah I mean, like I said, it's, it's a struggle, but I'm hoping, I'm really praying that things will will start getting better and things will start going differently with me actually putting everything onto him instead of trying to keep him onto my shoulders and uh, handle everything. 
Uh, that's basically like that, that one Greek mythology story where that one guy is literally holding up the world. Uh, that's kind of how I feel at, uh, for most of the time. Um, so I'm taking myself out from underneath it and I'm giving that to God. I'm going to let him handle it. I'm going to just, I'm going to keep trying to remind myself that this is his battle. This is something I need to give to him and I need to just rely on him and trust in him and, and see what he's got planned. So I hope, really, really hope these Bible verses helped you guys. Um, I hope that whatever you guys are going through, God makes it easy for you guys, that you guys actually remember to put whatever burdens is on your plate at God's feet and let him handle it. Because that's going to be the only way anything will ever get better. Otherwise, you're just going to be in the exact same boat I was in like two days ago where you felt like the world was literally just crushing you like a rock. So, yeah. Anyways, I'm gonna let you guys go. I know I really made this video a lot longer than I expected. I'm really, really, really sorry, but <laughs> it needed to be done. It needed to be said. So, yeah. All right, I will talk to you guys later, and you guys, you guys know the usual stuff. Like, share, subscribe, hit the bell button, notifications. All right. I'm going to let you guys go, and you guys have a great weekend. Bye, guys.